Thanks, Joe. Great introduction. My name is uh, Diane Hutchins, and I'm filling in for Carolyn Peterson this morning. I'm with the Washington State Library. And I'm pleased to welcome Carolyn Martin this morning to, uh, oh, oh, I forgot. Uh, Joe alluded to uh, doing something with our chat box, and uh, we would appreciate it if you could type in your name and your library or organizational affiliation in the chat box below. Uh, it makes our, our funders happy uh, and helps with our statistical reporting. Great. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Great. Really glad you could all make it today. I think it's going to be an interesting program. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm very pleased that Carolyn Martin can uh, join us today. She is the Consumer Health Coordinator for the National Network of Libraries of Medicine Pacific Northwest Region. In her role, she helps to promote health literacy and access to quality consumer health information to libraries and community organizations to reach underserved populations to better improve the health of their communities. Previously, she worked in hospital libraries in Indianapolis for several years before moving to Seattle almost two years ago. She received her MLS from Indiana University and her undergraduate from Goshen College. I uh, want you all to uh, welcome uh, Carol Carolyn this morning and uh, take it away. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I just want to thank the State Library for the opportunity to tell you about the resources of the National Library of Medicine. These resources are freely available to assist with the health information needs of your institutions and the communities that you serve. This is just a, a few of the categories I thought I'd go over today and uh, after telling you a little bit about who we are. These acronyms may or may not be familiar to you. Um, either way, let me just go over them briefly. NIH is the National Institutes of Health, which is part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It is the nation's medical research agency that works to improve the health of the nation. Many of you might be more familiar with the National Cancer Institute, which is one of the institutes of health. The world's largest biomedical library is the National Library of Medicine, NLM, which has a vast collection of print and digitally. It also supports and conducts research, development, and training in biomedical informatics and health information technology. It is one of the institutes at the NIH and is housed on the same campus. And in this photo, you can see one of the NIH buildings there in the background, and there in the front is the National Library of Medicine. NNLM is the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, which is one of the programs of NLM, and was established with the Medical Library Assistance Act of 1965. Member libraries and information centers in the NNLM provide health professionals and the general public with health information resources and services. Let me turn up my volume. I see that some of you are having trouble hearing me. We offer free classes. And here on the slide, you can see some of the classes. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed a slide there. The NNLM is currently made up of eight regional offices across the country. Here is the Pacific Northwest region. Uh, we are also known as the PNR. And we serve Alaska, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, and Washington. We are located in the Health Sciences Library on the University of Washington campus in Seattle and have been here since the beginning of NNLM. The mission of the NNLM is to provide health professionals across the country with equal access to biomedical information and to improve the public's access to health information so that they are better informed to make decisions about their health care. We offer uh, free classes. And here on the slide, you can see some of the classes that we have offered, including a data forum that we held with one of our sister offices back in March that was attended in person and online with experts in the field presenting on health data. Classes are offered online in the form of a webinar type format with additional class exercises to hand in later. We also have Moodle classes that are asynchronous so that you can work at your own pace. We also have a monthly webinar that you see there on the bottom right hand of the screen called the PNR Rendezvous. We offer a variety of topics including the National Library of Medicine resources, health topics like the one you see there on how patients use social media, 
Next week, we will have Liz Morris, who you might be familiar with through Web Junction. She will be presenting her capstone project with the UW iSchool, where she partnered with us to find out how to reach public libraries and how better to serve them. We also have a webinar called PNR Partners, where we feature those who receive funding from us to present their projects or programs that they've developed. This is a way they can showcase what they've done, as well as to tell our audience the benefits and challenges and to encourage others in our region to consider applying for funding in the future. It's always exciting to hear about the wonderful work that these organizations are doing and to hear the passion. The classes are offered at all of our regional offices and our training centers, and we have a link on our page where you can see the listing and sign up. These classes and webinars are available for Medical Library Association CE credit, and some of these CEs can be put towards the Medical Library Association specializations, which I will mention later. These are some of the blogs that we or our greater network create, and we encourage all of you to take some time to explore them. The Dragonfly is our PNR blog, and we include upcoming classes, news from NIH and NLM, health and biomedical news of interest, and other topics will um, include a wide range of interest to libraries and community organizations. The Bringing Health Information to the Community, also known as BIC, is, uh, focuses on communities that are underserved. And our National Evaluation Office blog uh, has weekly postings that apply to evaluating your work and its impact and learn about evaluation tools and resources. And of course, our office has a presence through Twitter and Facebook and Instagram to keep you updated about what we're doing, health news, and more. So let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about some of our consumer health resources. But first I want to ask, how do you search for health information? And if you don't mind, just going ahead and typing your answers in the chat box. And I'll just kind of review those over um, after some people have typed in. Well, I see that someone has got um, a favorite of mine, and Mayo as well, PubMed, Sinel. Great. I'm glad to see that some of those resources are ones that are part of the National Library of Medicine. Um, generally, uh, most consumers tend to use uh, Google, and uh, surprisingly, when I was working at the hospital library, amazing amount used Google and Wikipedia. Uh, and this included our health professionals. According to a 2012 uh, Pew Research report, 8 out of 10 people start a health search with a search engine rather than a particular website. But sometimes starting with a website can help save you some time and make searching easier. And if it is health information you're searching for, I suggest going to the National Library of Medicine, where you can find links to all kinds of resources uh, for consumers, students, and biomedical professionals. And there in the red circle there at the bottom left corner of that screenshot, um, I am highlighting some health information, which lists a lot of uh, consumer health resources by the National Library of Medicine. And here you can just see some of what is offered regarding consumer health. And I'll briefly go over a few of those just to get you acquainted. Medline Plus is um, the National Library of Medicine's consumer health resource, and I see that many of you probably already know about this, but I thought I'd still go over it anyway. This is where you can locate uh, reliable health and wellness resources. Medline Plus doesn't create the information, but before information is added to the website, it must be reviewed and meet strict criteria, such as no advertising. This way, consumers don't have to wonder if the information is authoritative and reliable. Medline Plus goes ahead and does that for you. And as you can see, there's um, information on health topics, drug and supplement information. There are videos, surgical and other, as well as um, interactive games and quizzes. There's a medical encyclopedia that has um, like one or two pages of health information. There's a medical dictionary that has an audio component so that if you have trouble pronouncing some of those difficult medical terms, that will help you. We have some health news, uh, clinical trial information, a magazine, 
Uh, there's easy to read materials uh, if you need to find um, uh, information about a health organization or a medical service near you, there's a link for that, uh, multiple language information. And if you work in a hospital or clinic, uh, Medline Plus Connect is offered there as a way to uh, connect the electronic medical record to Medline Plus. And there, in the red circle there, is uh, a link to our Spanish version. And this is what our Spanish version of Medline Plus looks like. It isn't everything that is in the English version, but quite a bit. And this may be very helpful if you um, work with Hispanic communities. Uh, to use Medline Plus, you can search using the search box up there at the top right. And it works much like a Google search, uh, but all your results will be in Medline Plus. Or if you prefer, for instance, if you're looking uh, for a particular category or uh, a health topic, you can search uh, one of these links that are here on this page. And for an example, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, some screenshots using the health topics section of the Medline Plus. So this is what a health topic page on Medline Plus looks like. Um, the example here is anxiety. As you can see uh, on the left screenshot there is a uh, table of contents. And as you scroll down, and uh, the screenshot on the right shows uh, what the page looks like as you scroll down. Uh, it's organized in a way in specific categories uh, so that you don't have to keep going to different uh, websites to search on uh, diagnosis or symptoms or treatment. It's all kind of put there right for you. It tells you where the information is coming from, such as the American Psychiatric Association. It will tell you um, if it's in another language. And if there's video, um, that will be indicated as well, too. There on that first screenshot on the left, you can see that there's a medical encyclopedia with uh, links to um, information regarding anxiety, as well as related health topics. Uh, it will tell you what National Institute of Health is associated with the research, if there's information in other languages, and it will point you to articles in our Medline Plus magazine on that topic as well. And of course, Medline Plus has a presence on Facebook and Twitter. And you can um, link uh, Medline Plus to your social media and besides Facebook and Twitter. If you click on that little plus sign there where the red arrow is pointing, it will bring up this uh, image that you see next to it with all these possible uh, ways of sharing the information through social media, many of which I have never heard of, but maybe many of you have. And we also have information on how to link to Medline Plus from your website and social media, and there is a page about that. And for other National Library of Medicine syndication, um, there is a page on how to do that. So it, um, it's linked from your web page, uh, so it doesn't look like it's a separate kind of uh, link for you. If you want more information about how to do that, we did have a webinar on that in our region in the um, eastern side of the country. And I can put that link there for you so you can listen to it and learn more about how to add syndication to your website. Let's see if I can do that. Well, I, I'm not sure if I can. If you're interested in that, you can always email me and I can send that information to you. Another resource for the National Library of Medicine is HealthReach. It is our multiple language resource. Uh, many hospitals and community health clinics and libraries provide services to their communities who may have uh, limited English proficiency. HealthReach offers reliable, culturally and linguistically appropriate information and is not just um, for health professionals, but also for public health administrators and anyone who is working with people who, uh, where English is not their first language. Information includes health educational materials in various languages and formats, provider tools, special collections on such topics as emergency and disaster, women's health, and mental health. And if you're an agency that has health materials in other languages, you can submit your materials 
And if they meet the selection guide, they will be um, included. This is information by, provided by the Special Information Services Branch of NLM. As you can see, there's a lot of information here on this screenshot. And I just want to point out the health information resources specific to minority groups. I won't go over them here, but encourage you to explore this page for information you might find appropriate to your community's needs. The, uh, the senior health information here is a uh, resource focusing on older adults. Medline Plus has a lot of uh, information on this topic as well, but this resource is specifically geared to older adults, and they might find it much easier to search for information. There is audio, and video, and font sizes can be changed, making it easier for those with limited hearing and vision. And there on the right, you can see there is a toolkit. Uh, so in case you wanted to offer classes on older adult health, that would be a place to go to learn more about how to do that. Jeanette's Home Reference has gone through a recent makeover, and it has uh, a bit of a more updated look. This resource contains information on specific health conditions which have a genetic component to them. It also provides information for resources and associations regarding specific conditions that might be helpful to parents and those seeking uh, assistance. This last tab up there on the gray bar uh, called Help Me Understand Genetics is a handbook to uh, understand better about genetics and the role they play in health. Here are some mobile versions that are available for your smaller devices of some of the NLM resources. I will add that some resources, such as Medline Plus, is a responsive design so that it will adjust, to the display, adjust the display according to the device you're using. And I also want to mention the National Institutes of Health uh, has quite a bit of information for the general public. Most of the institutes and centers have a section on consumer health information, so going there to each of those is a way to see more information besides the main uh, web page. Also, um, you can see there on the screenshot on the right, circled in red, is a link to Medline Plus, as well as a place to sign up for their newsletter, um, which has a lot of helpful consumer health information. I mentioned earlier that Medline Plus has a magazine. Uh, this magazine comes out four times a year, and it is available online and in print. You can sign up for it individually or order it in bulk. Um, individuals can sign up for it as well. It's also in Spanish, and uh, it's a great um, resource to hand out at the end of a program, uh, to have in a waiting room or on your magazine racks. And after all this I've told you, in case you forget it all, and I know it's, I'm going kind of fast, there is a page to learn more about Medline Plus. Uh, you can use it to review uh, how to use it, as well as to train the rest of your staff. And uh, there's also some links to brochures as well. The NNLM uh, provides information um, regarding health reference service, especially regarding some guidelines and ethical considerations. And we have information about how to evaluate health websites. One of our consumer health coordinators in another region assisted with the contents of this helpful toolkit. Uh, and don't be fooled by the California name on it, as it contains a lot of health information for helping with health reference services. The second edition was published in 2014, so it is pretty up to date. And it is free to download and print. You can get um, specialization in consumer health through the Medical Library Association. You don't have to be a member, though the application to receive this is a bit cheaper if you are. We have several classes here at NNLM that qualify towards the specialization, and these are all free. The specialization is good for three years, and there are two different levels. And taking consumer health classes and getting the specialization will help you feel more empowered and more knowledgeable about offering consumer health service or just assisting with your patients and their health information needs. 
Briefly, I want to mention some of the drug resources that are provided by NIH and NLM. Med Medline Plus, as I mentioned earlier, has a section on drug and supplement information. And here you can see um, the screenshot on the left. Uh, you can search either in the search box or you can go by alphabetical uh, name. This includes generic names as well. On the right is an example of what uh, a drug information uh, page looks like. This is on Sertraline. You notice at the top there in the light blue that there is a table of contents. And then you see a red box with a warning. So anytime there's a drug with an FDA warning, that will come first with that red box. We also have uh, a resource called Pillbox in case you find a pill laying around and wondering what it is. This is a pill identifier, so by using such features as the size, the color, and the shape, it will help you identify what it is. On the right is Drug Information Portal, which is more for professionals, but anyone can use it, um, and it's a much um, more comprehensive drug resource than Pillbox or Medline Plus. LACTMED is a resource regarding drugs and other chemicals to which nursing mothers may have been exposed and may affect the breast milk, as well as the infants who are nursing. And if there is an alternative uh, appropriate, those will be offered. And this is a list of some of the drug and supplement resources, uh, and they're all there. And I didn't go over all of them, but you're free to look at this uh, on your own time and see what might be appropriate for your uses. The National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health has all kinds of information that you might be interested in. I pointed out here with the red arrows that there's a health topic page, um, pages as well as information about what complementary and alternative and integrative health mean, um, how to make wise health decisions, and there's also a link to Herbs at a Glance, which can also be downloaded and printed, and as well as information about how to find a practitioner. And next, I want to mention resources that are available for educators and students, as well as researchers and biomedical professionals. The um, NLM Specialized Information Services has a variety of resources. And I already mentioned the Minority Health link um, that I had earlier, but they also have this K through 12 uh, science and health education list of resources. And that is what this looks like. Uh, on each of those sections, you'll see a little plus sign on the right-hand side. And when you click on that, it'll bring up a whole list of resources. And I'll feature some of those in this session. These are the educational games that enhance learning, either through the curriculum or as a supplemental resources. Um, these are all about the environment, except for Base Chase, which is a DNA pairing game. Tox Invaders, Run for Green, and uh, Base Chase are all apps that are available through iPhone, uh, for iPhones and iPads. Tox Mystery and Tox Town are uh, web-based, and they are also in Spanish. So these can be used as a fun activity for students to practice their language skills. TalkSound also has um, an after-school science curriculum called Discovering the Connection, Your Environment, Your Health. It is for middle school students, and it can be used in the science classroom or as an interdisciplinary program that connects science and society. Lessons and activities in the curriculum combine research on the TalkSound website. And the objective is to introduce middle school students to the environmental health issues in their everyday lives and emphasizes the relevance of science to informed citizenship. So everything is provided there for you. The Environmental Health Student Portal is for middle school students to learn about the environment and its effect on health when there is climate change and pollution. And as you can see on this website, it also includes videos and games, experiments, and information for teachers. 
gene ed is information for high school students regarding genetics. Uh, many teens are interested in forensics because of such shows as Bones and CSI. Genetic medicine and learning about genomic medicine is becoming more widely known, and this resource can assist students who may be interested in those areas. The NCBI bookshelf is um, a place to prov where we provide free online access to a variety of books and documents in life science and healthcare. Uh, this might be helpful if your library or institution's budgets are kind of tight. And Household Products Database is a way to learn about the products we use every day, such as laundry, detergents, and shampoos and soaps and the hazards uh, that they may pose. Um, so information is here about ingredients, uh, information by the manufacturer, as well as for searching for product recalls. And it is a resource that is often of interest to the general public and not just to students or professionals. NIH also has educational information, and I'm just featuring three of them there for you. Um, they include information on various biomedical topics, health career information, uh, classroom materials, and a variety of other educational materials as well. Several resources include information about careers uh, for your students. Medline Plus information is primarily from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. GeneEd also in, has information about careers in genetics, and the Environmental Health and Toxicology resource includes information about careers in toxicology, chemistry, and environmental health. And you can sign up for the K-12 Science Education Twitter feed, which allows educators to keep up with news about these NNL, I'm sorry, these NLM resources. And some of you had already mentioned PubMed, um, and this is where to go to search biomedical information. Um, many academic and hospitals use the PubMed feature link out to have their full text resources linked to PubMed so that when their patrons are searching and want full text, they can either, um, they can easily click on that to get the full text or to request an interlibrary loan. Uh, there are tutorials. Uh, and other health features there to provide useful tips on how to use PubMed, but we also have our NNLM training office who provides free online classes about PubMed and another resource called ToxNet. It's a great way to introduce high school students or your more advanced students to the world of biomedical research, and if they plan to go into biomedicine or nursing or some other health profession, they will most likely be using PubMed. And many of these resources that I have in here can, even though they are more for the professional, they can also be used for students as well. PubMed Central is uh, not a publisher, but it does provide a full text free uh, articles. Uh, it's an archive of over 3 million biomedical and life sciences journal articles. It provides permanent access as an archive to all of its content. It is um, a repository uh, deposited by participating journals, which have to meet certain criteria to be included, as well as for author manuscripts submitted in compliance with the public access policies of participating research funding agencies. PubMed Health um, specializes in reviews of clinical effectiveness research to help consumers and clinicians find answers to the question of what works in medicine and healthcare. Clinical effectiveness reviews can show what treatments and prevention methods have been proven to work and what remains unknown. It provides summaries and full text of selected systematic reviews in one place that have been published or updated since about 2003. And nearly 40 information partners contribute their clinical effectiveness information to this database. Um, this is for both professionals and consumers, and it also is a great place to locate health news articles as examples when considering teaching students about health news and evaluating health information resources. Clinicaltrials.gov is uh, a place for patients and family members and healthcare professionals uh, to easily access information on publicly and privately supported clinical studies on a wide range of diseases and conditions. 
um, the uh, study information submitted by the sponsor or principal investigator and then updated throughout the study. Clinicaltrials.gov helps promote transparency in trials as well as providing um, links of results to publications. Some of you have maybe heard of NCBI, the National Center for Biotechnology Information. Um, it creates automated systems for storing and analyzing knowledge about molecular biology, biochemistry, and genetics to aid in the understanding of fundamental um, molecular and genetic process that control health and disease. NCBI also creates a variety of educational products, including courses, workshops, webinars, training materials, and documentation. And these educational events are free and open to anyone. The Arctic Health website is a central source for information on diverse aspects of the Arctic environment and the health of the northern people. Um, such as climate change, food, air, and water in the ecosystem, and traditional healing. The site gives access to evaluated health information from hundreds of local, state, national, and international agencies, as well as from professional societies and universities. The Arctic Health website is sponsored by the National Library of Medicine, but is maintained by the University of uh, Alaska Anchorage's Medical Library. ToxNet is a group of databases covering chemicals and drugs and diseases in the environment, environmental and occupational safety, health and uh, such things as poisoning, risk assessment, regulations, and toxicology. Information in these databases covers specific chemicals, mixtures and products, chemical nomenclature and unknown chemicals, toxic effects of chemicals in humans and animals, and citations from the medical literature. And again, we have training on that through um, our national training office that is also free. Um, PH um, Partners is uh, called uh, Partners in Information Access for the Public Health Workforce. And it is a collection of US government agencies, public health organizations, and health sciences libraries which provide um, convenient access to selected public health resources on the internet. The portal helps public health practitioners, policymakers, researchers, students quickly find and access data, uh, tools, and resources for public health practice. Um, the content includes health data, statistic uh, resources, grants and funding opportunities, health promotion materials, including uh, continuing ed and training. So there's a lot more information here than I'm going over, but um, I, again, I encourage you to take some time to explore that if you work with public health. And this is a new resource um, that the National Library of Medicine just recently announced. Um, it is called the Learning Resources Database, which is to make it easy to find educational resources for NLM products and services. Um, these materials can include videos, tutorials, and handouts. Um, in such products such as PubMed and clinicaltrials.gov. And using this, you can find resources using one interface rather than searching the different areas of the NLM website. And additional materials are going to be added on an ongoing basis. And I've already mentioned NIH a couple of times, but I want to point out again that this is a great resource to find information on such topics as research, various initiatives such as precision medicine, data, grants, and funding. And don't forget that each of the institutes have their own listing of resources available for professionals and the general public. The Digital Collections is the National Library of Medicine's free online resource for biomedical books and videos. All the content in digital collections is freely available worldwide, and unless otherwise indicated, it is in the public domain. And then until about a week ago, uh, the images from the history of medicine were merged with the digital collections here. The history of medicine images provide online access to over 70,000 digitalized images of approximately 100,000 items from the uh, National Library of Medicine's prints and photographs collection. These images include um, files of wide variety of visual media, including fine art, photographs, engravings, and posters that illustrate the social and historical aspects of medicine from the 15th century to the 21st century. 
I also want to mention uh, the National Library of Medicine's traveling exhibits. Um, some of you probably know about this, but others may not. But I think of it as a hidden gem. And this is the, the page for the National Library of um, Medicine's traveling exhibits. The, these exhibits usually feature six panels that have uh, additional information online. The content usually includes um, information such as educational resources about the social and cultural history of medicine. These exhibits encourage visitors of all ages to learn more about themselves and their communities and to nurture young professionals in history, education, museum studies, and the health professions. Now, these uh, exhibits are free of charge. However, shipping does cost, and that can be uh, prohibitive for some. So I encourage you to look for those ALA and NLM collaborations that you can apply to host or to seek funding from us or some other resources as, or other sources as well. This is one of the first NLM traveling exhibits, uh, Frankenstein, Penetrating the Secrets of Nature. This exhibition explores how society wrestles with scientific advances that challenge our understanding of what it means to be human uh, by using Mary Shelley's book. So it can be an interdisciplinary tool between science, literature, social science, and history. Harry Potter's World Renaissance Science, Magic, and Medicine um, is, was created during the height of the Harry Potter popularity. Uh, many in college or medical school and beyond grew up with Harry Potter and will probably find this exhibit of interest. Nicholas Flamel, who is mentioned in the first book of the Harry Potter series, was an alchemist from the late 14th and early 15th century who devoted his life to understanding the text of a mysterious book that some believed held the secrets of the Philosopher's Stone. Stone. And one of those uh, Flamel books is in the National Library of History Medicine Division. The exhibit uh, explores Harry Potter's world, its roots in Renaissance science, and the ethical questions that affect not only the wizards in the Harry Potter books, but also the historical thinkers at the time. A lot of fun activities have been done by hosting this exhibit. Um, one hospital librarian told me about how the president of her institution dressed up and dress, introduced an OWL program that was attended by physicians, residents, and other hospital staff with their families. We recently had a PNR rendezvous webinar on, this, uh, on the traveling exhibits, and we focused primarily on Harry Potter's world. So feel free to check out our website on that to hear the uh, recording. This is one that uh, is being um, circulating around the country through a partnership with ALA and NLM. Uh, this year, it has been in our region at libraries at Fort Peck Community College in Poplar, Montana, at Clark College in Vancouver, and at North Seattle College. Um, more libraries will be hosting this throughout the next few years. This is one of the newest exhibits. Um, Health care reform has been a contentious political issue in the United States for more than 100 years and continues to be a contentious issue. For all the people, a century of citizen action in health care reform tells the lesser known story of how ordinary people have made their voices heard and helped shape the changing American health care system. This is also one of the more recent exhibits uh, confronting violence improving women's lives. This exhibit focuses on a topic that is often ignored, and it brings it to light to professionals as well as to the general public. It explores the developments during the latter half of the 20th century when nurses took up the call and led the way as they pushed the larger medical community to identify victims, to adequately respond to their needs, and to work towards the prevention of domestic violence. Again, all these exhibits include lots of information online, and they all have an educational component to them. The National Library of Medicine also has disaster information for libraries um, to use for themselves as well as for their communities. Medline Plus has a topic page specifically about disaster preparation and recovery. It includes links to information about drinking water, pet care, and evacuation. And because of these, uh, all things pan um, zombie, the CDC has a graphic novel called Preparedness 101, Zombie Pandemic. 
And this graphic novel is a strategy to make it a little more engaging to prepare for disasters and learn how to be informed. The main purpose of the Disaster Information Management Research Center, DIMRIC, is to develop and provide access to health information resources and technology for disaster preparedness, response, and recovery, and to connect people to quality disaster health information. NLM has developed a number of tools and information services designed specifically for disasters and emergencies. NLM's Hazardous Substance Data Bank is a comprehensive toxicology database and provides the framework for the wireless information system for emergency responders, also known as WISER, which you see there uh, in the middle of the screen. This resource was used by emergency responders to assist with management of chemical, radiological, radiological and biological emergencies. WISER was used after Hurricane Katrina and in Iraq to help identify potentially toxic substances. And more recently, uh, NLM has assist, assisted in public health um, in response to the Ebola outbreak, Hurricane Sandy recovery, the Gulf of Mexico oil spill, and the Japanese radiation event by providing timely, evidence-based information. Uh, to help lessen the impact of disasters on communities, um, the National Library of Medicine, uh, through the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, has committed resources to help all libraries maintain their core information resources and services following a disaster and to support the health and gen general well-being of their communities. And if you're interested in hosting a summit or workshop, you can contact Dan Wilson to see about that possibility. Um, there's also on that page in the, the blue um, bar in the middle of the, um, the slide there, you can see that there is um, information about holding a uh, workshop as well as the 10 steps workshop materials that include risk assessment score sheets as well as some PowerPoint slides. Dan presented a version of this training session at the Public Library Association conference this past April, and he's also done a desktop version for us that we offered earlier this spring. So you don't have to be uh, physically in the room with him. He can do it from, uh, we had people calling in from various uh, locations, and it was all done uh, online. The Disaster Information Specialist Program is offered through the Medical Library Association and was developed by the National Library of Medicine. Um, there are a series of continuing edu education courses that have been provided and developed um, to help prepare for this. Uh, the specialization is for librarians and other interested professionals and is available as a basic or an advanced level. And if this is of interest of you, um, this is free and online, and it uh, helps you gain the knowledge and skills necessary uh, to support your institution or community in times of disaster or other public health emergencies. And I just want to end here by telling you again about um, the NL NNLM. We encourage you to think about joining our uh, organization. It's all free. There's very little um, that needs to be done. You just uh, fill out a form. And it is a way to, um, we also provide things like a lending library. We can send you um, bulk orders of brochures for your patrons. You can uh, network and collaborate with other members. Um, we have a weekly digest that we email out with all kinds of information. And uh, there's also information to an opportunity to um, apply for funding when that's available as well. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, our PNR Partners webinar, a chance to showcase what you've done. And this is a great way to assist in improving your community's access to health information. We offer you know, the free training and uh, help uh, do professional development for your staff. And uh, we can provide the information through programming services to um, help engage and empower consumers in their health care and to increase the health and safety of your communities. It is also a way to provide resources to encourage health and science and education and research. So we um, hope that you join our organization and uh, use our resources uh, to help further the needs of your uh, institutions. 
So I know that was a lot of information, and I thank you for your time. And um, I'm open for questions or comments. Well, thank you, Carolyn. That, that was a fascinating uh, presentation. I had no idea that uh, there was so much information available, so uh, I learned quite a bit. Uh, any questions for Carolyn? And I know if you're like me, um, when I attend some of these kinds of sessions, I don't think about it until later. Uh, so feel free to contact me. To, you know, you can take my email down, and you know, it doesn't matter how small your question is. We're happy to help you because we are your connection to NLM and NIH. So we do have a couple of questions with their um, people with their hands raised. Ah, yes. Can you get us a list of all the sites? Yes, I plan to. Um, upload this presentation uh, in the next day or two. And um, again, let's see if I can type in. If you go to and I think it's presentations. But I'm not quite sure. So feel free to email me if you um, if that link doesn't work for you. You can't find it on our website, uh, and I will lead you to that um, link. And uh, Shirley, looks like you're first in the queue. Oh, what's your question? Thanks. Um, my question is: Is there a link or a partnership between the National Library of Medicine and the Center for Disease Control, and what? kinds of different information would we find at the Center for Disease Control, or, or why would we go there instead of the, all of these great sources you've been showing us? Thanks a lot, Carolyn. Sure. Um, actually, there probably is some kind of connection, though I'm, I'm not knowledgeable about that. Um, there are a lot of different government resources or agencies out there. Um, CDC is often linked from Medline Plus and other uh, NLM resources. They all kind of do their own thing um, because I think they all have different focuses. I think of CDC more as a professional uh, link, but uh, it does have a lot of great consumer health information as well. But um, I would say you probably just add it to your whole bag full of other resources. Well, thanks, Carolyn. Uh, Leanne, do you have sure. a question? Yeah, I, I typed a question in the chat, too, and it's, it's the same thing. I'm, we're looking at a discovery layer or a discovery tool software at our library and looking at how to present information better to, of all kinds to our public so that it's easier for them to find it. Um, and we're looking at, you know, having like perhaps a bento box presentation. And I'm my brain, as you're talking, is thinking about how can I make sure that all of these various resources that you are talking about, and they all look wonderful, are properly cataloged, although that's maybe not the right word, into our um, discovery tool, our searching um, tool, so that the results from them will surface for our patrons. Do you know whether NLM has any um, project going or if there's something that already exists that's creating um, metadata or making it possible to connect these resources through tools like um, EBSCO Discovery Service or um, WorldCat Discovery, that kind of thing? Thanks. Well, I have to tell you, I'm not really sure, but I think that's a really good question. And I was going to say, let me um, investigate that. And can I get back with you? Um, you sure. can yes. uh, send me your email using my email link, and then I'll let you know. And I can also let um, Shirley Lewis know as well. I think that's a um, a good thought because, like you said, there are so much, um, so many different resources, and um, you know you can't just list every single one. So that would be a great, great idea. Anything else? Well. Uh 
Well, I just want to say thank you again. I appreciate all the help from the State Library in getting this set up and uh, giving me the opportunity. And like I said, feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, we're here and happy to help you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Carolyn, so much for a wonderful presentation today. Uh, I'm really glad you were able to be here and share so much with us. And I uh, hope maybe we can have you back. And, and as uh, Shirley noted in chat, uh, this will be archived. So you can revisit it and uh, savor it some more. It's really fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. There was another. Another question by uh, Debbie Renton much earlier on and said that uh, there used to be um, bookmarks and brochures. Uh, she was wondering if they're still available. Uh, yes, we do. We have uh, several of those. When I go to um, conferences, I usually try to bring a few of those along. Again, if you're a member of our organization, we will mail those to you free um, in bulk. Uh, and uh, just let us know. Feel free to uh, email me if you have trouble signing up to become a member. But they are also available uh, from our website where you can kind of print your own. Uh, they may not look as nice, but they are there as well. And let me know, too, if, for, if you want that link, because <laughs> I was having trouble making sure that it's available, uh, typing in that uh, chat box. Anything else? Well, thank you. The end. Yeah, you mentioned that the digital collections, um, in passing, you said that until a week ago, the images were merged with the rest of the digital collections. And I just wanted to ask, what happened? Did they go to a different resource, or where are they located now? Oh, they're all in that um, that one slide <laughs> that I can't think of. It's called Digital Collections. They've merged it all together. Oh, so the merge. So it's included ago. with. I get it. Yeah, uh, that's what they've claimed. I haven't tested it out, but um, they're all supposed to be there. And that screenshot says there, um, that slide that they show you, uh, digital collections, um, that is what used to be um, the images from the history of medicine. Those used to be separate from the digital collections, but now they're all together. That's great. I misunderstood. I thought you were saying that they were they had been together, and then they were now separating them. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that yeah. merging instead. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a way to just kind of put everything together and make it easier. Excellent. Thank you. Uh huh. Anything else? Thanks, uh, everyone, for coming. And uh, Joe, thank you for uh, filling in also. <laughs> uh, we're all substitutes here today. So uh, uh, thanks. I, I'm really glad I was able to come and enjoy this. Well, thank you.